Welcome back to Let's Chat, the show where we chat about chatting. Today's topic, designer face masks. I know, I know, I can't wait either. Let's get right into it. But first, a message from our sponsor, the subscribe button. I've looked into it and a very, very tiny percentage of you are actually subscribed to the channel. So it doesn't cost you anything. If you like the content I make, just click that subscribe button and I thank you profusely. I thought we'd have a chat today about designer and luxury face masks because this whole situation is a little weird. Some brands can't get enough of it and are using masks to essentially print money for themselves. Others are being doggone tree-hugging do-gooders and making masks but donating the profits to charity. Nasty. And others still are sitting on the sidelines paralyzed out of fear of doing the wrong thing for their brand. Also, a quick note before we really dive in, YouTube hates it when you talk about these icky germs that are getting everyone sick these days, so I'm going to be calling it Sharona from here on out, as in my Sharona, because why not? Okay, back to the masks. So, if we think back to the spring when Sharona was really picking up steam, there was kind of a run on masks. People were trampling each other for a single N95. I mean, I can relate, I stabbed another child for an N64 back in the day. Anyway, there's this mask shortage, so people go looking for other options, the most common of which is the simple cloth mask. I mean, it wasn't long before the hype beasts and luxury lads started thinking, hey, I wonder if any designer brands make these things. You know, those guys are always looking for an excuse to spend an extra hundo just to have a brand logo slapped on something. So, the first brand I remember really taking off with the mask heat was, of course, Off-White. They were already making masks, I'm assuming primarily for the Asian market, but still sold in the West, though I'm assuming more of a novelty for most. But suddenly, there was an actual need for the things. People were tripping over themselves to hand Farfetch in essence a cool hundred bucks for an Aero logo or diagonal stripe mask. The things were reselling for hundreds on StockX. It was madness. There was a problem though. This was still early for Sharona. People were scared and that mask shortage was kind of a big deal. The press caught on to the hype of off-white masks and to the untrained eye, that $100 price point suddenly looked a lot like price gouging. Here's how I'm assuming things went down at off-white. Hey Virgil, people are kind of pissed off here. I don't know, they just don't get it. They're just idiots and they can't understand why a tiny piece of cotton with a screen print on it costs the same as a Chromebook. That seems like a weird reference to you? Well, maybe I had trouble coming up with an item that cost $100 that would make a jarring juxtaposition with a cloth face mask. Anyway, it looks like price gouging, so we should probably stop selling them. So they did, which of course caused the resale market to spike, but resellers gonna resell, don't hate the player, hate the game, so on and so forth. Once things stabilized a bit and they saw other brands dipping their toes into the mask waters, Off-White came back in full force with a full mask collection. I was one of the suckers who ponied up and grabbed one. I cracked open the old Rugrats piggy bank and shelled out for this Arrow logo mask. They did ostensibly make some adjustments to justify the price, adding in an extra cotton layer and an adjustable metal nose insert. I'm sure those added an extra $50 to the production cost, making their price totally, completely, unassailably justifiable, of course. Actually, Virgil is kind of all over the mask game. The dude can't get enough. He produced a collaborative mask with the Museum of Contemporary Art with his classic quotation marks. In this case, with the text, still speaks loudly. Because I hate my bank account and never want to actually get ahead in life, I also grabbed one of those. It actually was quite reasonably priced. The thing is though, that's kind of reflected in the quality. It's really cool, but also stiff and kind of uncomfortable to wear. But remember when I said Off-White looked around and saw other brands starting to make masks? They most definitely were, but it was primarily streetwear brands. I mean, Bape has been making masks forever. Again, not too surprisingly because they're an Asian brand and that market has consistently been wearing masks since the whole SARS deal. It makes sense. Streetwear brands tend to consistently produce smaller drops of product rather than seasonal collections. That means they go into production way faster. And if anyone is used to screen printing graphics on cotton, it's streetwear brands. Hey, rip up those blank tees and back, sew some straps on them, hop into Photoshop and shrink our logo, print them on and post them on our Shopify tonight. 15 bucks a pop. 
will be rolling in it. And call up Travis Scott, see if he wants to go in on a mass collab. Most of those ones didn't speak to me much because they really were mostly just boring logos on repurposed tees. But some gems did break through, like this bad boy here. This one is a Takashi Murakami mask that he dropped through the Network app. It's actually really, really nice, one of my favorites. It has adjustable ear straps and pleated fabric with a kind of marbled pattern and of course his famous flower design. When I'm leaving the house, I grab this one to take with me all the damn time. But not everyone was trying to make money just for themselves. Lest we forget, we're talking about the deadly Sharona disease here, a global birdemic. That means there were a lot of people really in need, both of effective masks and financial aid. The first person I remember really getting in on things from that perspective was the host of Project Runway that's not Tim Gunn. You know, the pipsqueak with the fallout boy hair. You know, the elf with the flock of seagulls hair. You know, the leprechaun with the Danzig hair. Okay, that's enough height and hair shaming, I know. I'm talking, of course, about Christian Siriano, someone who's both insufferable but also seemingly has his heart in the right place. He actually bypassed commercialism entirely and switched his seamstresses over to just making masks to be donated to New York hospitals and other institutions. That got a lot of really fawning press for him, so suddenly a lot of other designers saw an opportunity. That is so gross of me, I'm sorry, I don't mean to imply that these other designers also started doing charitable stuff just to look good. I'm sure many of them really care and were just inspired by Christian, but either way, a lot of brands started making masks. There were usually two ways that went. Either brands sold masks and donated the profits to charity, or they put together a kind of deal where for every mask you bought, they donate another. Greg Lauren was the highest profile designer I can remember getting in on this side of things. I mean, this is a guy who makes cut and sew pieces that can cost thousands of dollars, and he's really respected in the fashion world because he kind of goes to the beat of his own drummer. Damn it, Sharona. Everyone is scared to spend money and they aren't willing to pay three grand on a cut up kimono right now. What to do, what to do. I know, I can take my scraps and sew them into masks. It'll be hashtag sustainable and hashtag charitable. I'm a genius. He actually did something pretty cool and sold them through the secondhand luxury site, The Real Real. So really leaning into that sustainability and recycling angle. They were really affordable compared to most of his pieces at least and the proceeds went to charity. I grabbed one and is it a good mask? No, not really. I mean, the pattern is cool and I think it looks good, but the ear straps are absurdly long. Like, I can't for the life of me imagine who has a big enough head that this made sense to them. But even so, I love this mask. It feels really personal and handmade, and there's a little patch in there where he hand signed his name, and he shipped it with a little handwritten heartfelt note, so I really can't hate it. So we have all these brands making masks at this point, but it really begs the question, where are the big boys? Where are Gucci and Louis Vuitton, Prada and Balenciaga? You'd think they'd be all over this. I mean, there's clearly a market for it. Every time I go to the fucking grocery store, I see someone with an LV or Gucci monogram mask they probably got off Etsy because there's nothing that says luxury like a fake mask that was clearly not made by the actual brand. Why are these brands sitting this out? They would be killing it. I mean, imagine a leather embossed Louis Vuitton mask designed by Virgil or a canvas GG mask by Alessandro Michele. They could charge three, four hundred dollars or something like that, and I guarantee they'd sell out immediately. So again, why not do it? I can only imagine that it comes down to some marketing or risk management or brand image hacks from corporate. So we've done the market research, and while we know masks would sell, we're really worried about what it does about our favorability ratings. Our polls say our score would drop six points. I mean, we're Gucci. We can't be associated with this disgusting disease. We're too rich for that. We can't be thought of with this coronavirus. <laughs> That, that sounded French, not Italian. There were so many accents in there. I'm so sorry. I don't know. It's just crazy to me. If you look at all these brands' financials, their profits are down. Sharona hit them hard. They make oodles of cash in Asia, and those markets were shut down at the beginning of the year. And then as soon as those countries started opening back up, things got bad in the West. You'd think they'd want to do whatever they needed to to make up ground. And here's the thing. If they did make those masks, I guarantee that even if Sharona goes away and no one wears masks a few years from now, those pieces would still achieve like grail status. I mean, imagine if during the Cold War, Prada made gas masks in case of a chemical attack. 
Those would be in a goddamn museum now. They'd be insane, cool collector's items. I just don't see the downside. And these days, everything is accessorized. You're telling me you're willing to make bags the size of a half dollar, teddy bears, basketballs, headbands, dog collars, band-aids, trash bags, skateboards, Jenga sets, paper clips, drum sets, mouse pads, ear pods, tennis rackets, bubble blowers, playing cards, pet beds, dumbbells, and more, but you're not willing to make a face mask during Sharona. And yes, those are all things designer brands have made, look them up. Louis Vuitton did launch a monogram tinted face shield. Yes, you heard that right. While it's kind of cool and crazy, it's in the same vein as the stuff I just listed. Novelties, without a real use. Why are they so afraid to make something that might actually be helpful to people? The closest we've come so far to one of those brands making a face mask is Burberry. Oh, Burberry. They feel so weird and lost these days under designer Ricardo Tichy. They just feel like they've lost their direction. Like, he tried to come up with a new monogram for them that, in my opinion, is a complete disaster. Luckily, he didn't stick that on their mask and just went with the classic house check, something that somehow never goes out of style. It was only a limited release though and sold out crazy fast. Either way, it felt kind of weird. Like, Ricardo's over there like, I know you want a Gucci mask, but I've got some nice ones over here. Come on guys, they're really cool. Please? Maybe that's what the biggest brands are afraid of, looking desperate. I guess that could make sense. In the end, it's really the mid-tier luxury designers that have been capitalizing on the face mask market. You know, the reasonable ones who only charge $200 for a t-shirt rather than 500. We've already talked about Off-White, but another one I thought was pretty great was Helmet Lang. They've seemingly been doing really well with their masks, and they actually put some thought into the design before releasing it. I mean, take a look here. It kind of looks like a big branded nutsack. And who doesn't want that on their face? I know I do. Helmet Lang for when you want a scrotum on your mouth. Really though, this mask is amazing. The way it pulls in towards the ears is by far the most comfortable mask design I've come across. Hopefully more designers put some actual thought into their masks and what they could do to make the concept better or set themselves apart. And then there are the designers who made masks part of their aesthetic pre-Sharona, who now look like wild Nostradamus prophets or something. Like Marine Sayre has been putting up mask looks on the runway for years now and really has ownership over the concept. And people like Craig Green have also used masks in their fashion shows, but that's more artistic than functional. But either way, it gives him some mask cred that others don't have. And who needs street cred when you've got mask cred? I mean, think about it. I'd way rather be alive than fly but dead, you dummy. So where does that leave us, friends? Come, sit around the fire with me at a safe social distance and let's wrap this thing up, shall we? We've got at least six months of Sharona left by my count. And in the modern fashion world, that's what, eight seasons? So designers still have collections to show while this whole thing is still going on. Side note, I just wanna to say to fashion designers, if you're gonna do virtual shows, do a virtual runway or lookbook or something, I don't wanna see a blurry film school video with a poem over it that only actually shows two pieces of clothing. Sorry, rant over. I think it's a really safe bet that we're gonna see more brands putting out masks, likely some really big ones. Vegas odds, I put the over under at a solid 10 to one with a big parlay and a three card ante. Yeah, I'm a big gambler. But should you buy any of these? Maybe I'm a big hype beast bandwagoner, but I say yes, if you have the money to spend. I mean, definitely don't spend all the money in your Animaniacs piggy bank and go into debt, leaving you selling your plasma to a local university just to make ends meet. But if you can afford it, I say go for it. I think odds are good that A, we'll be wearing masks far longer than we think, B, they'll be collector's items of some value when this is all over, or C, they'll simply be cool reminders of a really wild time in history. Maybe all of the above. In the meantime, I'll be over on Etsy searching Gucci GG monogram face mask. Peace.